In these two problems, we're given right triangles with fun shapes extending off of the sides. In this case, semicircles. In this one, equilateral triangles. And we're asked to basically figure out the areas of those shapes and compare those areas to look for any really awesome patterns. Now, this is a cool extension of the Pythagorean theorem because typically what you see are squares off of the sides. And what, you, what you're observing, or maybe you just told this and you memorized it, so you have a right triangle, the Pythagorean theorem says, okay, draw a square off of each side, so my estimation, and what you'll notice is the sum of these two squares always equals the sum, it always equals the, the area of the square of the hypotenuse. So we're going to see what happens if you change the shapes. Instead of squares off the sides like we traditionally do with the Pythagorean theorem, what happens if you use semicircles or equilateral triangles? What are we going to find out? Well, that's exciting. So let's get started. To find the area of a semicircle, what do you do? Well, to find the area of a circle, you just take the radius and square it and multiply that by pi. So I guess to find the area of a semicircle, it makes the most sense to find the area of the circle, right, with the same diameter and radius, and then divide it by 2. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, we have three circles here, 3, 4, and 5. Let's call them 3, 4, and 5. In the smallest circle, what's the radius? Well, we know the diameter is this whole triangle side length right here. So the radius is half of that. It's 1.5. So um, in this small semicircle, let's call it, I, I said let's call it 3, but now I'm regretting that. Let's call it uh, circle A. What is the area of circle A? Let's call it little a. So we're going to confuse it with the area up here. So this is little a. Well, the area of little a equals 1.5 squared, which is just 2.25, right, times pi divided by 2. And then let's call this circle B. Well, now the diameter of this side is 4. It's, the side length is 4. So that's the diameter of this circle, semicircle, and the radius is 2. So what's the area? Well, it's 2 squared, which is 4, times pi divided by 2. <coughs> I'll leave it as that for now. And let's call this circle C. Well, C equals, well, here the side length is 5, so the radius is half of that, or 2.5. So to find the area of this semicircle, we square the radius. 2.5 squared is 6.25 times pi divided by 2. Okay, so we found all those areas. Is there a connection? Well, I'm going to remember that a squared and b squared is c squared. So we know the square of a and the square of b equals the square of c. What about the semicircle of a plus the semicircle of b plus the semicircle of c? Let's see if there are connections there. So a squared, or I should say a semicircled, is 2.25 pi over 2. b semicircled is 4 pi over 2. And c semicircled, question mark, is this equal, is equal to 6.25 pi over 2. That's c semicircled. So how do we combine these two right here? Well, we can think of them as something over 2, so they're both fractions or halves. And when we add fractions, we just add the numerator. So 4 pi plus 2.25 pi. Can we add that? Yes. It's just like adding, uh, let's say we had 2x plus 3x. Well, that would equal 5x, right, because you just add the coefficients. Well, think of pi here, even though it's a number and a constant, think of it as x. <coughs> or use it the same way as you would with x. Here you have 2.25 pi's, and here you have 4 more pi's. Altogether, that's 6.25 pi's, and it's out of 2. That's what we get when we add these two. And yes, whoa, that's equal to the semicircle of side C. So that, that tells me, whoa, in the Pythagorean theorem, we know squares off each side equal each other, but somehow, the semicircles off of each side also equal each other. Let's see what happens in this next example with equilateral triangles. Okay, so let's call this equilateral triangle down here, triangle A. 
this triangle B and this triangle C. How do you find the area of this equilateral triangle? Well, think of a square. Let's just draw a square for a moment. A square over this side would be we have an area double of this equilateral triangle. Same thing here. If you think of the empty space, if you cut this this equilateral triangle in half and move these two pieces up here, it would fill it up. So it's almost like having two equilateral triangles. So to find the area of this triangle, I would just find the area of a square that fits around it, divided by two, and same thing here. The longest side, and oops, my undo tool is not working. But the longest side, if you drew a square off of it, that would be twice as large as the equilateral triangle. So let's just use a squared plus b squared for a moment and c squared. So a squared is 9, b squared is 16, and c squared is 25. Now the equilateral triangles are just, their areas are just half of these things. And even without calculating, I can see that this is still going to be equal. We're taking originally what we had, 9 and 16, which is 25, and having everything. So this whole equation is still proportional. And what we get is 4 and a half plus 8, and that equals, well, what's 25 divided by 2? It's 12 and a half, and that is still equal. So by changing the shapes, right, each shape is built off the same leg. You're just changing the whole proportion of the equation. So here are the semicircles. Sure, I'm changing each side into a weird semicircle shape. But if I do that to every side, right, if I build each shape off of the proportions of the right triangle, the equation, the Pythagorean theorem that relates those proportions will still remain true, right, because I'm changing the shape of each side of the triangle equally. So, although it might look different, here you can see with the equilateral triangle, everything is just half of what it would be if I was using the Pythagorean Theorem. So, if you take the Pythagorean Theorem and divide everything by 2, you still get the same relationship. Or if you take each part of the Pythagorean Theorem and multiply it by pi r squared divided by 2, if you do it to each part, it's still the same equation. That's a basic, understand, a basic concept in proportionality. This is a fun introduction into that. So, needless to say, any shape you draw off of the sides of a right triangle will will relate. The areas of those shapes will relate. If I drew a weird squiggle off of this side, and as long as the curvature is the same here and then here, this is not to scale at all, but these three blobs with the area of this one plus the area of that one would equal the area of this blob right here. That's one of the, one of the most fascinating aspects, I think, of the Pythagorean theorem, and probably something that's touched upon the least in high school and, and middle school, but I, I wanted to share that with you. All right, thanks.